Hi brothers. We spoke of faith in the other last classes as an intersubjective event that is to say between two subjects, human subjects and the divine subject. And the language we use in this encounter is the language of disclosure, language which is not ordinary language of metaphysical thinking, but a language by which we reach something un unspoken. We go beyond and move towards the unspoken. We don't succeed in articulating the unspoken, but it remains unspoken. And we move towards that. So that is a disclosure model language, not the ordinary language. Disclosure model language is uh, all of two types also. Speak of scale model language yeah, and, and uh, proper disclosure model language. For both these la uh, languages can be considered as a scale model language or model language. Here model is working as a means of attaining the unseen. The scale one inch is equal to 1,000 kilometer. It makes us to understand the India of the map. India we don't see at a glance, but in the map we have a scale model language. So we speak about the scale at one inch or two inch, meaning 1,000 kilometer or 2,000 kilometer. So scale model language, and this is what is meant by language. The other day you asked what language, in what language we speak. It is this model language, language in which we use model to understand something which is beyond perception. So it is model language. So we speak the language of uh, uh, ordinary speech in relation to the model. But our intention and our meaning is not remaining at the model, but it goes beyond. Like, uh, let us say, I gave you examples already I have given you. Uh, when you speak of God as a person, we know what person is. So that is the ordinary language. Person means this, you know. Person, two subjects, I am dealing with the other subject as a person. With regard to God, God is a person, but God is not a person. God is more than a person. So when I speak in terms of person, I reach only some distance. I don't reach the full distance of God. God is unspoken. Even now, God remains unspoken. Even when I call him person, the reality of God is more than that. So my talking is always towards the reality but never reaching fully. But when I speak to you as a person, I reach you. So this is a moral language. So this is the language which we use in talking of God, not the ordinary language. Ordinary language, there is no reference, to, uh, there is no need to have recourse to a model in order to speak about something else. I, have, I, I can speak of the chair, chair here. My words reach chair, my conception. Whether I speak in Telugu or Malayalam or any of the human languages, the, the object I speak is an object that is there. When I speak the uh, modern language, the object I speak of is not there. The object I speak of is far, far away and I am not able to reach the object with my concepts. I move towards, my language remains simply a language towards. And therefore, if you take that concept alone, then that concept must be denied immediately. I said, God is a person. God is not a person. So I must deny it. Always it must be encountered with the niti niti of the Indian philosopher. There is the depth of the Indian philosophical thinking. Indians had understood Indian Munis long, long ago, had understood it and our Western philosophers are articulating it is in our lifetime. So their concept, you must uh, have neti neti. 
so we are always speaking two words not exactly the thing so that language of moral understand we can use only the language of moral in talking to god talking about god in praying the language i use is this language of moral morals we speak only oh god please take care of me let us say i am speaking about that that is not a ordinary metaphysical language please take care of me supposing i am a sick man i am saying please take care of me if it is an ordinary language i am asking shekhar please come and uh, take me to the hospital and uh, show me to the doctor get medicines it is clear and uh, it is reaching the object i reach you and you reach me but uh, when i say god or oh lord take care of me i am speaking a language of morals you understand the difference is that so i am not asking god to come and take me to the hospital i am asking god please oh god when i say call, call god as a person i am not referring to you as if you are there god is not there at all god is there in the general sense of course god is always there. but everywhere the word god is there cannot be used really you know that god is there is equal to god is not there nathi nathi god is there nathi god is not there so when i speak of god god is far far away and my language when i ask him to take care of me i am not asking to take care of me like you would take care of me so this is a moral language so it is not exact metaphysical language metaphysical language is a common sense language which i am using in relation to you metaphysical language means language of things so the thing is there so the thing that i refer to when i speak when i pray when i pray is not there it's far far away so that is the language which we use in uh, speaking about god moral language and then this moral language must be clearly understood as a moral language of course we know it only god please take care of me god i am suffering when we pray that we know that uh, we are not speaking to someone actually there who is listening to us and then coming down to help us we know that we don't, we don't expect anybody to come and ask for the altar jesus is coming down and we don't expect that that is if we don't use the metaphysical language even though you do not know the distinction between metaphysical language and moral language ordinary people they don't expect jesus to come out of the tabernacle so jesus is not spoken of as a person sitting there 5 meters away from me you understand there is a difference between modern language and uh, metaphysical common sense language we speak towards and all our concepts are moving towards and if, uh, his care is suppose he takes care of me it is in this sense not exactly in the uh, god comes and takes care of me no but god takes care of me god takes care of me how if god wants to give me something he can do it to me only through my brothers only in historical events god wanted to free the jewish people from israel how could he make them free through the historical event of the exodus so god takes care of us by involving in history but then he doesn't come there exactly like you know he sends moses so moses guides the people moses goes to the pharaoh and through moses god is leading the people so god is leading the people in and through history again through medium mediums are used without medium god does not work with humans if god works without mediums that is directly I, like we speak one to one meaning i speak to shekhar and shekhar understands it as what my word indicates this one to one meaning is not there with regard, with regard to god god's speaking to us is always always in a different way uh, through history god speaks to us god reveals himself god saves me god takes care of me through events in history but always through the medium of events in history
to experience god you encounter him through history or you encounter him through your person in the depth of your being or you encounter him when you look at the cosmos and then when you are carried by the aesthetic sense and the wonder of god and then you are in contact with god the wonder that god is so these are all god experiences you don't think of any special uh, what do you call a special uh, a, a levitation in the air and a special phenomena of that type don't think of those things they are there it happens for some people or people of some psychological setup step up uh, psychological setup not everybody all the people in the world have got got experience but not all people don't seem to go up in the air whether they went up in the air or it was their experience of going up in the air we cannot make a distinction whether they went up in the air or whether it was their experience of moving up in the air their experience of moving up in the air is their experience that need not be verified by a third person cannot be verified by a third person so he may have felt i have gone, gone up he may be standing on the earth really speaking historically speaking so going up in the air is an experience limited to him experience limited to him like for example uh, our lady of mm, maybe that is one but i want to say is about uh, fatima uh, revelation fatima um, appears of our lady it did it happen yes it did happen but it was an experience of the three persons and when they say our lady appeared we accept them to be saying the truth of their experience you look at that the same direction where our lady is standing there you may not see do you get the three people they saw our lady but nobody in their village they saw our lady at the same time they look at our lady it is they, they, our lady is visible only to the three persons that they do not say oh, only for us our lady is available that they don't say they do not know that they will they see our lady appearing so psychologically and scientifically speaking it is some type of a uh, um, hallucinatory kind of an event maybe it is psychological experience basically psychologically it is every you human event is psychologically realized psychological experience i am not speaking to you you are psychologically related to me supposing i begin to shout at you you will not smile like this psychological i have got an, our human experience is through psychology so the psychological experience does not mean things are not real i am not saying either that they are making up they do not make up anything they they see our lady there dressed up with the rosary and the god experience is experience of the people experience of the persons concerned levitation is an experience of the person concerned i may feel i am going up in the air maybe that is my genuine feeling i am not saying a lie but when you look at me i am here but that i am experiencing elevation there are so many phenomena of this type so don't be distracted by the phenomena god experience is something which we all have if we do not experience god we do not exist if you exist it means that you experience god let me put it in different way shall i can i say if you exist you experience the air but do you think of the air until i spoke of the air just now were you ever thinking of the air you do not think of the air but you are experiencing the air if you exist it means that there is oxygen in the air oxygen also must be there simple any air is not enough if you are existing it means there is oxygen but then you may not necessarily know that you may not experience it as a uh, my, i experience my brother same way we experience god the more if you exist you are existing in the one who supports you in existence there is a of course i am speaking in poetical language supports you supporting no more correct language more easily understandable language is god of the god is the ground of my being ground my being so i am here now on this ground let me use this in a metaphorical language metaphorical way my being in the world the foundation of it is god so if you are then you are on the foundation of being 
you are experiencing God. There is nothing separate. And many people don't speak of this as God experience. You don't speak of this as God experience. That is why you should spend time in meditation every day. When you realize and articulate things as God experience and then you contemplate on that experience, the miracle, the wonder of God experience, which is really, which has become so a non-wonder for us, it has become an everyday language. Or the wonder of God experience when you look at the beautiful scenery, the, sun, or the sunset or the sunrise and the wonder, you have, I am sure you have lost yourself for some time in the wonder of the sunrise or the sunset. Haven't you experienced? But if you are human beings, you have an aesthetic sense. If you are really, really human beings, if you are cows and buffaloes, I'm sure you may not have... Cow and buffalo may not have wondered at the sunrise and the sunset. The very fact that you are human beings, you are capable of experiencing things in their symbolic dimension. In their extra meaning. Their surplus of meaning. The sun rising. Oh, sun rises every day. Come, what is there in that? Uh, uh, for, a, for a cow, there is nothing special. But then for a human being, the sun rising, the whole phenomena is something uh, of a miracle. Who brings the sun there? Why should it rise so far? How far is it? Uh, the heavens you look at are all filled with the small, small stars. But they are not small stars. They are big, big, huge planets or hu huge uh, uh, re beings, realities. See, you see this? Then you wonder, who, how, did, how did they come about? Look at the sun. It's filled with all these kind of planets and big, big planets. Imagine. When you think of that, wonder, don't you wonder about it? Surely. I'm sure you all wonder. Though you don't say. In your eyes, I don't see. But is that a wonder what it means, sir? You are looking at me and saying, <laughs> like this. Wonder, if you understand the meaning of that, it is wonder. That there are stars in the sky is a wonder. Why should there be stars? The world is enough for us, no? Or, let us say a plant, a seed you put in the, in the soil, it comes up as a plant. It is a wonder. How do you make the, do you make the plant to come up from the seed? What do you do? Even if you are pouring water, even if you are pouring all kinds of things, it is a miracle. It is happening not because of you. You have to do something. I had a cut on my hand the other day. It got healed. How does it happen? I am not doing anything. I mean, I do a little bit of uh, antiseptic or something I apply so that the bacteria, so harmful bacteria may not make my hand wound worse. Nothing for healing. Healing takes place by itself. Our body heals itself. Is that not a wonder? I do not know, but wonder is taking place in me. It's a miracle. And uh, when you don't limit the wonder only to those exp exp uh, experiences which is rare. Cancer healing. It is a rare thing. Therefore I begin to think of it as wonder. Okay, it is wonder. Because of prayer and all, it is wonder. Just like my wound healing, as much wonder it is as my wound healing. You understand? So, uh, healing of cancer is a wonder, it is a miracle. Immediately you should know, my hand healing is also a miracle. Don't say this is no miracle, other thing is wonder. That is a misuse of language. Then you are using the metaphysical language to speak about a wonder. Wonder is God making himself present. Every wonder, yes. So the condition for authentic language and use of authentic religious discourse is the purity of the language we use and the discretion that we make in distinguishing the language of disclosure from the language of metaphysical description. Praying and the worshipping believer should always restrain from doing this using metaphysical you may use metaphysical language but then strictly speaking you should understand 
and he knows, the praying person knows that uh, it is not a metaphysical language that he or she is using, God give me, I have nothing to eat, God give me something. He doesn't expect our Lord from the tabernacle to get up and give him half a kilo of rice. If, she expect, if he expects that, it is metaphysical language. When he prays, God give me, I have nothing to eat. It is a disclosure model language. Though the person praying may not know that it is a disclosure model language. And when she goes home, let us say, she gets one kilo of rice. It has happened in the case of so many uh, charitable people. For example, in our, in Mother Teresa. Nothing to prepare food for the children. And she prays before God. When she goes home, uh, so many kilos of rice have gone. Somebody has dumped, and dumped kilo, kilograms of rice, sacks of rice in the house and gone. It happens because everybody knows that these people are living on charity and there is a general sympathy among the population for these people and people know we require. And they come and give. There is a regularity and uh, then they know this is the time now perhaps they may be needing. Or when someone thinks of giving it, it is a time when our um, uh, Mother Teresa is praying. It's a correspondence. Not that it is exactly calculated to be the same. Uh, but then it happens. Our brothers, we are not, uh, my, my brother, brothers in uh, Katapena, on Francis, he is doing something similar. He has got four, uh, six, seven, eight uh, f f uh, institutions or houses where old beggar, beggars and uh, discarded people are taken care of. It gets done, not a single paisa he takes from, a, from the friary. Not a single paisa he gets from abroad for helping that. All the money, all the expense is given by the people. People in that area, every month, I'll give you one, kilo, one sack of rice. One man says, I give one man, a shopkeeper. And there will be other people. Who, he just started the institution. Things are coming there. So, he must have prayed, God, please, I don't have anything. And he got. His prayer was not in the metaphysical language, symbolic disclosure model language. Uh, that you cannot say, I have prayed to God. If God doesn't bring that, God will bring. I can say, surely he will bring. If he does not bring, then I will punish him. I can tell my servant, please bring me two, kilo, two kilos of rice. And if he does not bring me two kilos of rice, I can punish him. I will send you away from the job. I can punish him. In the same way, you cannot punish God. I asked for two kilos of rice. He did not give me. So, God is no more there. <laughs> that nobody does. That is to say, they know the difference between the two languages. The language of this, uh, moral and the language of metaphysics. They know it. We are only as uh, elite people who understand and analyze things, we make the distinction between. This distinction is something which we know. And so far as many questions can be answered in the light of this distinction we make. So it helps us to know theoretically these are the things and possibilities. God language is always a language of experience. It is an experience. But the bringing of rice is a historical event. It is not. He puts a, comes and puts rice there, finished. My begging before God for language is I am experiencing my dependence on God. I am experiencing my being loved by God. I am experiencing in the heart, in my, in, 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 my, in, in my being, God's protection of his people, the people who are hungry. This is the experience, language of experience. God language, God experience, God experience. That is there. Historically, somebody puts uh, things there. That is not a matter of my experience. This uh, experience has caused that. I have no reason to say that. It is not that. But then it happens and I always recognize God's involvement. I, I recognize in my disclosure model language. I don't jump into metaphysical language. Ah, when I ask to God, he put it. That is metaphysical language. Do you follow? If I ask a boy to bring me two kilos of rice, he comes and brings me. That is metaphysical language. He come, comes and brings me. This confusion between languages should not take place. If you are using it for prayer, 
we must be sure that our language is pure you must be sure means it is always like that but then when you analyze you must be clear about it no confusion of uh, the languages one way one, uh, once you talk of the exposure language uh, modern language and then another time you speak of immediately metaphysical language so no mixing of it the reference to the unspoken must always remain a matter of mutual dialogue moreover the function of language of models within prayer and worship should not be used as a means of speculation and investigation all our investigations are based on language mathematical language or physics language of physics then i further exp explain and go deeper into things and so on and explain that you cannot do with the modern language disclosure modern language so we should be careful that our language does not function or it is made to function to investigate and explore the nature of god and so on the what happens is with the, our language of disclosure we get into contact with the transcendent get into contact with the transcendent so for example god experience there is a relationship my response and god's uh, or my prayer and god's answering this is god experience language so that is there so the always our prayer is a matter of god experience we should not therefore use it for investigation and scientific experiments but for entering into contact with god to confess it to confess the divine reality to adore the divine reality to ask forgiveness all these are possible in our relation with god these are all experiences confession is my experience worship adoration is my experience as asking for and experiencing forgiveness is my experience these are not metaphysical languages which can be described in the metaphysical form so the language model employed becomes symbols through which the transcendental becomes real that is it the far away reality becomes through my prayer language something real i feel this way so so finally the third condition is i also so uh, spoke yesterday there will be a community be i experience god in this way and i speak about my god experience to others then others also have their own way of god experience we come together god has intervening in my life in my historical experience god is helping me or people are helping me in some way or the other helping out from a very hopeless situation i see the hand of god my experience there are some other people like that so people come god is a god of love god is concerned about us i want to speak about that to somebody then i talk with the person and there may be other persons like that so a community emerges from the use of language i need to express and communicate and this community that emerges can be two types i said yesterday from the other day already it can be a loose spiritual kind of community or it can be a structured church community and the church structure church community takes place always in the case of historical revelation our coming together as christians took place based on a historical revelation of easter and pentecost on easter day the apostles experienced the risen jesus something happened for them within their inside something happened and they are so convinced that they become witnesses of resurrection and they spoke about the resurrection so the other men the other people also accepted their story and they believed that god is someone who is present jesus is someone jesus with the wounded hands and legs is no more dead but he is alive and he is living with us and he is 
being uh, made present by his disciples so jesus is present in the company of those people who speak about it so jesus becomes real and they become in what way is the body of jesus body means where you are present where i am present is my body body must be understood as a kind of a symbol body and spirit we make a distinction between body and soul it is not quite uh, biblical to speak of body and the soul we speak of spirited body body to spirit embodied spirit i am a embodied spirit where my body is there my spirit is there i don't have spirit somewhere else so attached to to be attached to me afterwards so the biblical language is embodied spirit where body is there my spirit is there so when where jesus is there his body is there jesus is there in those disciples they have experienced him in a tremendous kind of experience which they cannot just deny and not only one person so many about 500 as st paul says so many people experience the reality of the resurrection they cannot deny it they cannot forget it and when they say it that they have experienced it i accept their experience as something that has happened in the case and their being a community is like the presence of the risen jesus the presence of the risen jesus for me those people who are there with their jesus is present that becomes the body of christ you understand the church is the body of christ and the church today is a continuation of those people who joined the 500 people there we do not have the same experience as they had don't imagine that that we have the same experience as the disciples had disciples had a very specific experience 500 of them and they are convinced that jesus is alive the wounded man the one whom they crucified is alive and today living among them so they are the presences of the divine risen jesus with their conviction they continue through history and many people join them and the whole all the people who join and they, let us say take part in the eucharist we eat the body the body eaten becomes our body so in our case the highest resurrection experience is the eucharistic experience of a man of faith i experienced risen one through the body of christ through the eucharistic experience and so uh, the all those people who are participating in the eucharistic experience become the body of christ that is to say all the church church is people who receive the sacraments communion the whole church becomes the body of christ the church becomes the body of christ what is the body of christ the church said paul speaks of that you read through the body of christ is there but today we speak of body of christ as the eucharistic bread that is a mistake of language something happened in the course of history uh, and uh, uh, the church is called a mystical body and the eucharist is called the body of christ but actually it was the other way about the eucharistic body was called a mystical body in the beginning and the church was the real body real body of christ that is to say christ is alive today and christ is acting means the church is acting the church is acting in history in the power of the risen one and in the presence of the spirit the church is acting 